Hey everybody, Hunter Fisher, Trapper, Trader, Guide, Scout, and Interpreter, and Country Cook, Steve Hall here in Nashville, Tennessee, along with Pretty Miss Sheila running the camera. Hi, Sheila. Hi. She does such a great job back there. I got a cape in here. I cooked one in a previous recipe, and, and some people ask me, what is a capon? When you go to the grocery store and you see turkeys and chickens and capons in the freezer section, buy a capon. They're inexpensive because people don't know what they are. And what it is, is it's a rooster that back when it was very young was castrated. Truly, this is a true story, so that it won't chase hens around the barnyard, fight with the roosters. And because of its mild lifestyle, being a castrated bird, it calms down and produces more fat in the meat, easier to handle in the barnyard, obviously, and they're so delicious. So come on over here and I'll show you what we're going to do today. We're going to butterfly this capon. Well, we rinsed him off, patted him down, we took the giblets out of him. And I say giblets, I have my entire life because giblets is spelled with a G. That's kind of, and people say giblets, I don't know who the first one was to say that, but I don't follow suit. Um, I've got a Gibson guitar, not a Gibson guitar. I got a pretty little girlfriend over there, not a girlfriend, because it's spelt with a G. So I took the giblets out of here, which are spelt with a G. I love to tell Sheila about that all the time. And inside of this bowl, you can see some of the fat. I even cut off the part that went over the fence last, cleaned it all up, and I cheated. I got a head start in the back here. I've already cut down with these poultry shears. Get yourself a nice set of poultry shears. I cut down this side and almost all of this side of his back. So I only have this much to do on camera. Like I said, I cheated. We've also cut this breastplate open slightly on the back side. So when you turn it over, look at that, it lays down there real nice and flat. We're going to put that in our barbecue. Now I've got some seasoning here. And in here I've got garlic powder, onion powder, and pepper. But I kept the salt shaker to the side just for a second to tell you something. I like to season these up, wrap them up, and put them in the refrigerator, but I don't include the salt because the salt pulls all the moisture out of the meat. So just use your pepper, your onion powder, and garlic powder to season it up real good. We'll rub some of that on there. And obviously, because I'm going to take this right outside and put it on that barbecue, I am going to include the salt, but I wanted to show it to you separate. So we'll add salt to it today here. Let me turn him over. Hit the other side with some. But it is a slick way if you'll just buy some poultry shears. You can do this with a chicken that's a smaller chicken or you can even do it with a turkey if you want. Be a little tough cutting that big bone in the back and cutting the back out of it. But you can turn it over and grill it in one chunk. Of course, when it's done, if you want, you can actually just split it down the middle. Now you got a half a chicken for anybody that wants a half a chicken. I'm also going to inject this, so let me get my goodies. Now I want to cook this thing low and slow on my grill out there. So I'm going to use one of these grill mats to lay it on. It's good up to 500 degrees. And I got this rascal right here. I'm going to slide this out of the way for a second so I can kind of lay this down. But my grill out there is curved. So I take, I take my grill mats and I round them. Just use that poultry shears for that. So when I get out there and I lay it on my grill, the corners don't hang outside. The seal goes shut. But with all that said, now it's time for some more flavor. And man, I just, when it comes to poultry, I just love to give them the needle. This stuff is so good. It makes your bird so juicy. You can just see the meat swell up as it goes in there. That's another thing too, is you can inject these and put them in the refrigerator overnight without the salt. Now this has garlic, water, like, uh, let me think, garlic powder, onion powder, pepper, and a whole stick of butter and about a half a cup of water in my injection marinade so it doesn't have that salt inside there. And you can wrap that up and put it in the refrigerator and man, overnight all them juices will distribute into all the fibers of the meat and make it so good. I'm telling you, inject your turkeys if you've never injected one before. Whoops! <laughs> If it's going to happen on camera, it's going to happen on camera. Guarantee that. Here, Sheila, if you'll tilt that just to the side. Let me see if I can get a little more out of that cup right there. Tilt it way over. There you go. 
perfect. Then I can get a full needle of this for this thigh over here. Oh yeah. It liked that. Well, it didn't like that. Anyway, I think we're injected up good enough. Thank you, Sheila. And we're going to go out and start the grill, get the coals going. I'm going to put that, I got a thing that goes about halfway up in the grill. It's for indirect heat because I don't want the flames coming up on the bottom of either the grill mat or the bird itself. So it's kind of like a plate you lay down there and I'm going to put a pan of water on that, then put the mat on top, then put this on. Man, then I can adjust the vents on the top and the bottom to get it to be about 250 to 300 degrees. I don't think that matters that much as long as it's between 250 and 300. And then I want to finally check the internal temperature of the thigh or the breast to make sure it hits 165. And oh, this is going to be so good. Let's get her on the grill. All right, we got a super nice hot bed of lump charcoal underneath that plate. And that's that plate I was talking about that will create indirect heat. Now we're going to put our grate on there, our grill mat, and get our butterfly caping on there. Man, are we ready, Freddy. We got our grate in there. We got our little grill mat so we don't have to worry about it burning. I'm going to close this lid. Look at the smoke pour out of the top. Let me turn this up so you can see it. I'm going to shake the camera a little bit, but look at that. Don't you know that's putting a lot of flavor inside of there. I got some of my pellets. I'll show them to you in a little bit. I sprinkled on there just before I threw that little porcelain divider in there. And look at her climbing. Man, it's walking up on 200 degrees already. So I'm going to start to cheat it down just a little bit. Let me close this bottom vent to about one inch opening and I'm going to keep a close eye on this and uh, to make sure when it gets to about between 250 and 300 degrees that's where I'm going to tweak it and then we're going to start watching it every now and then and you know I'll give you updates as we go along so our butterfly caping is in there and the best part that I've been saving is when it's nice and juicy and golden brown and about 160 degrees we're going to put our secret barbecue sauce on top of it what I did was, is I took this little fruit jar and I just sprinkled some of them little pellets down through the grate so they fall down to where the coal bed is, close it up, and man, look at the smoke pour out of there. That's the easy way to add your wood chips. Wow, look at this. It's been in here at about 275 to 300 degrees now. Let me check it with a thermometer. For about one hour exactly. I put it in at 10 after 6 and it's 10 after 7. She's climbing up to 130, 135, 140. It's getting there. And why it's doing that, Sheila? Hand me our world famous barbecue sauce because I think this is going to get close. Yeah, look, it's already at 150. Fantastic. It's time for our top secret barbecue sauce that I'm going to show you at the end of this recipe. It'll be on the left hand side of your screen. You'll be able to click on it. It'll take you right to the barbecue sauce recipe. Look at that, 158, 159, it's slowing down. That's perfect. That's about five degrees short of where I want to stop cooking. Let me hand you this, Sheila, so it don't roll off the barbecue stand there. Look at this here, butterflied barbecued capon. Man, oh man. I think we got us a camera shot here for our thumbnail. And I love this grill mat. No flame ups, even though a little flame's coming around the corner, it can't get to this. And when I close it, obviously, the flame will go away. We got her coated. This barbecue sauce is so thick and sweet and spicy and delicious. You'll absolutely love it if you make a batch. Perfect temperature, perfect color, perfect barbecue sauce. Buddy, it's perfect. Come on over here, let's take a close look at this. I'm going to carve some of this up for you. You know, it's almost a shame to cut into perfection like this, but I just got to do it. You get a little bit of white meat out of here. Look at, the, look at the juice in this thing. Look at that. Injected barbecued capon. 
out there on that grill, indirect heat, 300 degrees for one hour. I'm going to lay a couple of pieces of that, and then I'm going to cut off some dark meat off the outside of this thigh. I'm cheating. I'm just ruining all these cuts for somebody, but I don't care. Would you look at that? Man, done to perfection on all these spots I wanted to show you that. Just juice running out of it everywhere. And of course our world famous barbecue sauce. I'm going to put a little bit of this in the corner just for dipping. And of course you can just cut this thing in half. Put one of these half of chickens on a plate and serve it to a couple. Give them a fork and a knife and say cut away and enjoy. Man, this thing came out just wonderful. I really hope you enjoy our recipes, especially this barbecued butterfly capon, or for all you fancy people, capon. However you say it, it's a wonderful chicken. And Google it. What is a capon? And C-A-P-O-N, and you'll find out how it's castrated at a young age so that it'll live a mild lifestyle and produce so much more juice and flavor. I just think from now on, if I'm going to buy a chicken, I'm going to buy a capon. By the way, we need you to subscribe to our channel if you enjoy our recipes. Little Shotgun Red's face will pop up over here if it hasn't already. And over here on this side, I'm going to put this delicious barbecue sauce recipe right over here. So all you have to do is click on it and it'll take you right to it. And thanks again for watching our video. Sheila, did you have a good time? I had a great time. This came out really terrific. I could not be happier. It's so tender and so delicious, and it was so easy. See you next time right here on Cooking with Shotgun Red. And is this the best barbecued butterfly capon you ever had? If it ain't, it ought to be. See you next time. Bye-bye.